awesome music and I just couldn't help but dance. Does that ever happen to you? Or does beautiful music ever give you the chills? Or make you feel happy or sad? Sometimes music makes me cry and sometimes it makes me squeaks feel like dancing. When we listen to music, it's not just our ears that are listening, it's our whole bodies. When you listen to music you love, it can make your body relax, and very emotional music can give you the chill. Sometimes listening to music will make your body send more blood to your leg muscles, making you ready to dance. It all starts with the brain. When your ears hear music and your brain responds, your brain starts reacting and gets excited, and it sends messages to other parts of your body to react to. But why do our brains react to music in the first place? Well, it has to do with patterns of notes, or little bits of music that you hear over and over again. And expectations, thinking you're going to hear one bit of music and then hearing something different, which makes your brain surprised. Music is made up of different notes, and each song you hear is built around a scale, eight notes that all go together, like a little note family. You might have heard people call them do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. <laughs> nice high note, squeaks. So that top note and bottom note, the ones we sometimes call do, that's called the tonic. It's the note your brain waits and waits to hear. It's the most important note in the whole song. Like in the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Right there, on the word snow, that's it. That's the tonic. White as snow. Most songs we know come back to that little note, the tonic. We're pretty used to that. We expect it. And the composer, the person who wrote the song, they know that we're expecting the tonic and that until we hear it, our brains are going bananas trying to figure out what's going on and when the tonic is coming. As long as we keep getting surprised, our brains keep getting excited and our bodies keep reacting to the music. We're waiting for the big moment when the music switches from being unstable and all over the place to the tonic. That big moment is called the resolution. We just know the resolution will come eventually, but in the meantime, we keep listening, and the composer is playing a little game with us, getting us more interested in the music. They're making us wait for the big moment, holding back the tonic until the very, very end. So the next time you're listening to a song, you'll know that you're listening with your ears, 
but your brain is listening too. While the music is telling us stories and stirring up all kinds of emotions inside us, our brains are busy listening to the patterns, getting excited, and making the rest of our bodies tap along. Hi, Jesse. This is our friend Sam the Bat. Sam's visiting the fort today. Hi, everyone. Sam, do you want to see a cool trick I can do with this balloon? Hmm, I like cool tricks and balloons. Okay, here goes. Whoa, how did you get that balloon to make different kinds of sounds? Well, when I pull the balloon tight so there's only a tiny little space for the air to come out, it makes a high sound. Oh, interesting. And when I don't pull it as tight so the air comes out of a bigger space, it makes a lower sound. But you want to know something really cool? What? This balloon is actually a lot like the way people can sing. What do you mean? Well, Try singing a high note. <clears throat> uh... Wow, great singing. Why, thank you. So when you hit uh... that high note, you tighten something down in your throat inside your neck. They're called your vocal folds, which are like folds of skin. People also call them vocal cords. I tighten my vocal folds? Really? But I've never even heard of them. <laughs> That's because we do it without even thinking about it. You don't have to think to yourself, now I'm going to tighten my vocal folds. You just sing that high note and your body knows what to do. That's really neat. And let me guess, when I sing a low note, shall I? 
please. <clears throat> uh. Lovely. Thank you. So when you sing a low note, the, what were they called? Vocal folds. Right. The vocal folds weren't as tight. Is that right? Exactly. So you know how a balloon has air in it? That's what I was letting out of the balloon. Right. Remember how I controlled how much air I let out? If I held it tight, not much air was let out. And if I held it a little looser, more air came out. Oh, okay. So when I held it tight, the air coming out made the neck of the balloon vibrate or move back and forth really, really fast. That's what made the high sound. And when I held it a little looser, the balloon didn't vibrate as fast. So it made a lower sound. When we sing, our lungs and throat are kind of like this balloon. Our lungs are located in the middle of our body, in our chest, and they fill up with air and then let that air out. That's how we breathe. We take air in and we breathe it out. We let out air when we talk or sing, too. Your lungs deliver air to something called the larynx, which is in the middle of your throat. And those vocal folds we talked about are on the top of the larynx. Then that air travels through your throat and your mouth. And just like the air coming out of the balloon made a sound because it made the neck of the balloon vibrate, when you talk or sing, the air traveling through your throat makes your vocal folds vibrate. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Beautiful, Sam. Did you know that professional singers actually work on training their breath so they have a whole lot of control over it so they can make a really soft sound? Uh... Or a big, bold sound? Uh... <laughs> their vocal folds aren't really different from anyone else's. It's that control that makes the difference. Sam, can I show you one more thing? Sure. See how when I pluck the rubber band, it makes a sound, but it's not that loud. Uh -huh. But what about if I wrap this rubber band around this box? Ooh, let's see. Oh, it's definitely louder now and nicer sounding too. You can think of the rubber band as like your vocal folds. It vibrates when I pluck it, just like your vocal folds or the neck of the balloon. The box is like your throat and mouth. They help make your voice sound fuller and louder. All this making noise makes me want to go play my favorite instrument. Ooh, what's that, Jesse? Mine's a piano. I do like the piano, but really my favorite instrument is my voice. Oh, well then, let's go play.
Count us out. We're living underground and prayer it out.